All right. So today we're going to attempt some things related to Karanavasana, possibly Karanavasana. We'll see how it goes. It's the least friendly pose of second series. But let's bring our hands together and we'll just start at the beginning. Not at the beginning of second series, but at the beginning of this practice. So just take a deep inhale and exhale. Inhale again. And exhale to lower your arms by your sides. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. You can bend the knees if you need to. Inhale, halfway up. And let's just step the plank for the exhale. Stay here for the inhale. Press the downward dog for the exhale. Draw the belly in. Return to plank for the inhale. Squeeze the forearms together. Exhale, downward dog. Keep squeezing the forearms in so your arms stay straight. One more time like this. Inhale forward. And exhale back. Let's lift the heels high. Inhale. Bend the knees. Exhale. Look forward and jump. Inhale when you get there. Exhale to fold. Rise up. Inhale. Arms by the sides. Exhale. So one of the things for Karanavasana is we need to be able to curl into a little ball. So let's reach up for the inhale and bring your hands to prayer, right knee to the chest, exhale. Place the foot down, inhale, reach up. Left knee comes in, exhale. And your back will round as your knee comes in. Reach up, inhale. Just one more time each side. Just as high as your leg can go is fine. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, get tall. And this time, just fold forward to the exhale. Halfway up. Inhale. Step to plank. Exhale. Stay in plank for the inhale. Find your chaturanga for the exhale. Upward facing dog. Inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Just like before, rock forward to plank, inhale. Press the back again, downward dog, exhale. Just one more time with that rocking forward, pressing back. So that's also something that will help us, that feeling of armpits reaching back, armpits opening. Okay, heels high, inhale. Bend the knees, exhale, look forward and go. Or step or walk. Inhale, straight legs. Exhale to fold. Rise up. Inhale. Sama Siddhi. Exhale. Bend the knees. Inhale, reach up. Fold as you exhale. Melt your chest into your thighs. You have that moment where you're a little ball before you lift your butt up. Return to Uttatasana by bending your knees and reaching up. And there's that back bend. And we'll counter the back bend by melting the chest to the thighs, the head to the shin, forward bend. One more time like this. Uttanasana, we reach up, look up. Uttanasana, we drop the head and pull. And just halfway up from there, we'll step back to Chaturanga for the exhale. Upward facing for the inhale. Downward facing for the exhale. Rock forward to plank again. Squeeze the forearms toward one another. Down dog B for the exhale. So butt up, elbows down. Return to plank for the inhale. Chest forward, gaze slightly forward. Return to down dog B. As your butt lifts, your heels are going to move down. One more time. From this down dog B, we'll just keep pressing the armpits and chest toward the legs so that your V shape is a little more pronounced and pointier. 
from that place, start to straighten your arms to a regular downward dog. Okay, right leg up, inhale, step forward, exhale. Either high lunge or warrior one, inhale. And lower the fingertips down to either side of your right foot, exhale. Just stay here for a breath. Make sure your back leg is straight and try to square the hips. If you've chosen warrior one, you'll just a little more work to do. Belly in. Inhale, reach up again. And exhale, fingers down again. Just notice as you're lowering your fingers, how you have to draw your belly in. One more time like that. Reach up, inhale. The back bend. Exhale. This time, palms down. Round your back a bit. Belly in. Lift your back heel if it's up, rounded plank. I should have said, lift your back heel if it's down. If it was already up, you didn't have to lift it anymore. Okay, step to regular plank. Gaze slightly forward. Chaturanga for your exhale, whenever that is. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Left leg high, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Back heel is up or down. That's the only difference in choice. We reach up, there's the back bend, inhale. We exhale, fingertips down. We'll stay here for a full breath, just on this first one. You can pretend someone's punching you in the belly from the ground, with the little nose rising up, so that you feel that mid-back getting some space. Let's reach up for the next inhale. Back leg stays straight. Exhale, fingertips down, belly in. One more time, inhale. Exhale, palms down. We're almost set up for rounded plank. Just lift the back heel. Your left knee is already there. Drop your head, slide your left foot back. Okay, step to regular plank. When you're ready to exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. Okay, right leg up high again. Inhale. Step to the hands. Exhale. Warrior one if you can. Otherwise, of course, make adjustments with that back leg. This time, we'll interlace the fingers behind the back. Roll the shoulders back. Reach your knuckles toward your back foot. And we'll just stay here for three breaths. I also try to get the thumb away from the back leg a little bit. It just feels more open to the chest. Okay, so countering this back bend, we're going to lean forward and either rest our right shoulder on our thigh or let our shoulder slip just inside of the knee. And then you come down a few more inches. The knuckles go over the head. I let my wrists bend because otherwise there's no movement in the shoulders. But you decide if you keep your palms together or not. You can always stare at your belly here if you're not sure if it's participating. Okay, slowly let that go. We're gonna find that rounded plank again because I know you love it. So palms flat, drop your head toward your right knee. Keep your right heel lifting up toward your butt. And a step back, vinyasa at your leisure. I hope that Zoom is able to filter out the leaf blowers that are right outside my door. Okay, left leg up high, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Warrior one, inhale. And we interlace fingers, try to go the way that feels a little odd. And if you're not sure what that is, just kind of play with it until you're like, oh, I don't know about that. Okay, so our knuckles are sliding down that back leg that is very straight.
Hopefully Carrie can still see us because now she's a, a photo of herself. Okay, throat open. And we start to fold forward, belly in, as if your little known friend is punching you in the gut again, like it, he was earlier. Some folks are very flexible in the hip and the crown of the head will touch the ground near the arch of the foot. I would be able to do that maybe in an hour from now, but uh, warming up takes quite a bit of time. One of the reasons why I don't understand fancy poses on Instagram. How on earth did they get into that when they're at the Eiffel Tower or something? Okay, slowly release, round in plank. Keep your left heel lifting up toward your butt. And when you're ready, step back, vinyasa. Okay, so let's come to hands and knees. I tried to find a shirt that would not require attention, but the laundry pile is big. Okay, so we're going to just find a headstand, Vadahasa A, and we're just going to play with the knees coming in. So here we are. I can still see my feet. I'm just going to play with how close can the knees come to the armpits. Woo! And I found a spot that was a little bit too low because then you might have seen I couldn't get my feet up. So play with what is your spot where your legs are either by your chest or by your triceps or by your armpits. And try to go from there up to vertical. It's quite the fight to get your butt up and then not as much of a fight to get your legs up. Take a breath or two up there. It's a bit of a rest once you're there. And we're going to come down again to the spot we were before. That little curled in shape. However close you want to go. And then bring your feet down again. Take a few breaths in child pose. We'll do that many times throughout the class. So don't worry about how it went. Okay, downward dog. That is essentially our Karanavasana strength. You see why now it is a very gnarly pose. Okay, from down dog, inhale the right leg up high. Step forward to the hands, exhale. Warrior one, inhale. And let's just put our left hand down on the floor, big toe side of the right foot and our right arm up. So it's a variation on for Rita Parshvakanasana. It's the same twist concept, just maybe a little less twist. Maybe then we can control the hips a little bit more. Take one more breath here. Back leg straight. Let's untwist right hand to the right thigh so that you hold it sort of in place. Bring the left arm up and over the elbow and prayer twist. You might find that breathing gets a little more challenging. Maybe keeping the back legs straight got a little more challenging. Okay, unravel. We'll turn this into triangle pose. Reach that back foot in a little bit, or not, you decide. Left arm up. Okay, into Ardha Chandrasana. You can just launch onto that right foot. I'm just sliding the foot back a bit for staying in the frame. We have otherwise a very similar setup to triangle. We 
you're going to keep that left leg in the air, lower the left fingers, and square the hips to the floor. Inhale here to point the left toes, reach it, foot back, chest forward. On your exhale, curl into a little ball, bend both knees, drop your head toward your knee. Inhale, extend everything away again. Exhale, curl into a little ball. So your right leg is working very hard to bend and hold all that weight. Inhale, extend. Just one more time. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, extend away. Now let's place the hands about 12 or 18 inches in front of your right foot. Just see if you can lift your right heel, lean your weight forward, and use that to give you a little launch up and back for Chaturanga. I will just meet in downward dog so that we can do all of this on the other side. So left leg up high, inhale, step forward, exhale. Warrior one, inhale. We'll place that right hand down. You can always put it on a block or be on fingertips also. And just notice that this position your left leg is kind of freewheeling. It has nothing to push against. So it just gives us some information maybe about what we have to do with that back leg, what we have to do with the belly. Okay, slowly unravel. I just put the left hand on the left thigh to stabilize, but however you want to do it, right elbow comes over the left thigh. Hands to prayer, chest up, away from the leg, so that your thumbs and center chest meet. Okay, slowly well, we unravel, triangle pose. Wiping sweat. Ooh, okay. So we're trying to make ourselves a little more on one plane. So as that left hip comes under you, the right ribs are gonna move back a little bit. And let's keep that for Ardha Chandrasana. Look down as you transfer the weight. But then once your weight is solid on that left foot, try looking up again, see your thumb. Scooch that left hip under and the right ribs back. Okay, right fingers down, right hip down. So it's the same height as the left hip. Point the toes of that right foot, stretch the leg back, inhale, and curl into a little ball, exhale. Extend, inhale, curl into a ball, both knees bend, exhale. Inhale, extend, this is the last one. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, extend back. Just move your hands forward so that you have a little bit of shift ability. If your hands are forward, now you can get your left heel off the ground and jump it back. Chaturanga. Cycle through. We'll meet in downward dog. Okay, right leg high, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Change places between right hand and foot so your right foot is outside. And for right now in lizard, we're going to keep our toes facing front. We will change that soon, but not just yet. So either stay on the palms or come to your elbows. And if you're coming to your elbows, your hands are going to be out in front of you. The elbows will be sort of under the shoulders. Back leg straight if you can. You might want to drop the head and stare at your back leg. Hug your right knee in toward your shoulder. Take one more breath. 
We're about to make it really easy. Okay, back knee down, front foot turns out and let that knee drop open. And now it's like, oh, this is so nice. So in the second series, Karanavasana comes after Pinchamayarasana, which comes after you put your feet behind your head a bunch of times. Okay, let's rise up and vinyasa. So we'll move that foot to center so that we can plant the hand and move safely back. Okay, left leg up, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Change places with hand and foot. Get that left foot facing straight forward and make a choice, palms or elbows. Your elbows could just replace your palms. That's how you have them, a good placement. So you don't have to be able to put your feet behind your head to do Karanavasana, but it does make it easier because then you're a little more used to that curled in feeling. Also, if you can't do lotus, we're gonna try it with ways where we do not put our legs into lotus. Really the hardest part about it has nothing to do with the lotus. It has to do with core and shoulders. Okay, lower that right knee down, turn the left foot out to diagonal, let that knee drop open. Okay, start to rise up. Move through your vinyasa. We'll meet in downward dog. Okay, hands and knees. So earlier we did that little headstand where we curled into a little ball. We're going to try that again. Or you could do it from bottom house to see. The only thing is we're going to try not to kick. So as you're lifting up, you're just kind of walking your feet in, letting the knees bend into the chest, maybe one at a time, and eventually both, so that you're in a little ball. And you'll stay there for a few breaths, and we'll meet in vertical. Vertical will feel like a rest, even though it's a fight to get there. I felt a moment just now where I was very stuck. So I pressed the inner edges of the feet together and that helped me get over that hump. So let's start to curl into a little ball again. Think about your back rounding. And then come on down. Child's pose. That pose teaches us a lot about where our strengths and, and weaknesses lie. Very informative. Okay, let's come to downward dog again. Let's lift the right leg up high, inhale. Step it out three quarters of the way forward, exhale. We'll lower the back heel, we'll just slide the fingers back as we straighten that front leg. So we're just folded over a straight right leg. Okay, so twist a triangle with the left hand on the big toe side of the foot. Kind of like how we started earlier with the Pravrita Parshvakanasana. So the left hand could be on the block or the mat or the fingertips or the palm. And keep pushing into the ball of your right foot so your right hand moves back. And if you want, move your hand to the pinky toe side of your foot and try to get on that one plane again. So that left shoulder is going to move to the right and be a little bit more over your wrist. Let's slowly unravel. We're going to walk the right leg into pigeon. We'll 
kind of oscillate between upward facing and downward facing. But before we do, sneak a look at your back leg and just see that your foot is actually behind your hip. Because sometimes it's off on a diagonal we didn't even know about. Okay, so when you're ready on your exhale, you're just going to melt your chest toward your shin, your head toward the floor. And on an inhale, you'll just rise up again to a back bend that doesn't hurt. However far you want to go. Exhale, bowing forward, belly in. Inhale, rising up, belly is still in so that you can feel like you're taller. One more time. Exhale. And inhale. Place the hands, either vinyasa or downward dog. And let's go for side two twisted triangle. Left leg to lift. We'll just step it part way forward, not quite as big a stance as a warrior one would be. First, just squaring yourself, making sure that the legs can be straight here. If they can't, just make sure you grab something for underneath that right hand. When you're ready, right hand, big toe, side of foot, left arm up. And try to look up. Keep pushing into the ball of your left foot so the hip swings back. Potentially move that right hand. It will make the twist harder. It will make the balance harder and breathing harder. But sometimes when you make your pose harder, you actually start to pay more attention to something or you get more diligent. Okay, we'll unravel. I will meet in pigeon. Put that left leg in front. You decide how far forward that left foot goes. I have a, a pants issue that I have to work out. Otherwise, you might end up with a hole in the pants. Okay, sneak a peek at your back foot. And then three times at your pace, whatever that is, the exhale is to fold, the inhale is to rise. So I want us here to feel how the, the core is going to work for us. Because if we forget about that drawing in and up feeling, we'll end up with a little bit of back strain that we don't want. And we'll be using our arms more than necessary. And after your third one, whatever that is, vinyasa. Okay, let's jump through and have a seat. Marichasana A or B, you choose. The only difference is if your left leg is straight or in half loaded. I'm going to choose A. I'm going to keep my left leg straight. Right heel close to your butt. Reach as far forward as you can and wrap around your shin. This is one of my favorite preps for foot behind the head. And part of that is because of all my back issues. In this pose, you can really feel your belly draw in and your mid-back rise toward your left forearm. Take two more breaths. And we'll rise up. And we're just gonna stand on this right foot. It's already on the floor. So undo your lotus if you have it. Press into that right foot so you can get your left leg up toward the ceiling. Place your hands on your right calf and ankle and start to come into your standing split by lifting your left leg as high as you can. 
and shifting the weight just slightly into the ball of your right foot. Okay, let's just find a squat. Two feet down, butt down. For right now, just for the sake of everything being easy, let your heels come in a little bit and toes go out. You can sit like this forever, maybe. If you can't, I recommend putting your laptop or your book on the ground. Okay, so baby bakasana, we did this yesterday. We'll lower it onto the forearms. We'll bring our knees toward our armpits. The head is gonna stay off the ground and we'll just pick up our feet toward our butt. So there's a lot of leaning going on. It's actually not nearly as hard as it looks. So long as you can get your knees into that spot. Let's come down again, and we'll just come all the way to the butt for Marjasana, A or B on the other side. Right leg either straight or half lotus at first, and then left knee points up so we can reach forward of that left shin and around. And if the bind is impossible, just have your hands out to the sides. And just practice the concept of getting your shoulders and armpits to come more forward than your shin bones. If you are in full pose, see if you can feel that belly in, mid back into the forearm situation. Okay, and we'll rise up. So our left foot is already planted. We'll just move the rest of the body around it into standing splits we go. You can keep your fingers on the ground if you want. I like to put the hands on the meaty part of the calf. And I pull with the arms. And I lift up with that top leg. That helps a lot. Just like when you're going into difficult inversions. When the top leg is stronger, it helps you get a little deeper into it. Okay, into the squat we go. And this time, instead of um, baby bakasana, we're going to go from like the transition bakasana with the elbows really big to a more straight arm one. So the transition one usually is like when you're going titi basana to chaturanga or something. Um, so it would be pretty flat back and elbows bent. And then when I want to go to straighter arms, I'm going to think of lifting the mid back up toward the ceiling, rounding more. So just go back and forth between bent elbows, flat back, and straighter arms more rounded back. When you've had enough of such things, just vinyasa. And we'll meet in a downward dog eventually. I'm gonna close my patio door because even if Zoom can filter noise, my ears cannot. That is why I decided not to have children. I don't have the capacity for noise. <laughs> okay, right foot forward, left knee down, Anjanayasana. Hands to that right thigh or knee. Okay, into Prasara to Padapanasana A. So we'll just lift the back knee and quarter turn to the left. Hands line up with heels. Inhale for length of spine. Exhale, head lines up with toes. And just check that your elbows are in. Feel free to lift up the headstand if you want. We're not going to be here for very long. So if you do, it's really just to kind of test your hands. But if you do, you know that you are avoiding the hamstring strip. So there's a cost benefit that you have to kind of think about which is better for you. 
Okay, straighten the arms whenever your feet get down again. And we're just going to find our Anjaneyasana on the other side. So you can just walk your hands to the left. Try to nudge that left knee a little further forward. Come to the center again. This time we'll have the same feet as the prasarata that we did, but we're going to bring our arms through our legs so that our knuckles are down and our head eventually will come down. If your head is down now, you might want to lift your feet to a headstand. It's a little tricky, trickier than our other one, of course, but we're thinking thumbs down and pinky fingers down. And we're just going slow. And I did not land my feet on the mat, which indicates that I didn't round my back enough on the descent. So it's just information for later, however that went for you. So once your feet get down again, walk to the right. And we'll lower that left heel. Let's go for a heel to heel alignment. We'll put both hands on the big toe side of the foot and either stay there or bend your elbows and get your shoulder under your knee. And reach your arms out like wings. Okay, come to now some exit. So optional, of course, we're going to meet down dog anyway. So if you're there, you're just going to walk your right foot out so it's straight. Lift your left heel so your hips are square to the floor. And with your back foot, you're going to shift your weight forward a little bit, enough to get your back leg off the ground. And then you can vinyasa from there. Okay. Let's meet with the left foot in front. Lower the right heel. Both hands big toe side of the foot. And either stay there or airplane wings. That left shoulder comes under. And I get stuck a lot. So I recommend potentially use your left thumb to make this calf muscle move in toward your ear. And then you can wedge your shoulder underneath the calf muscle in a way that feels like it's pretty well stuck. There's not any slippage. There's not really any space for slippage. Okay, counting asana exit, if you want it. Getting that left foot off the ground is kind of a big deal. But once it gets off the ground, you can use your right leg to push you forward. Okay, let's jump through, have a seat. I'm gonna move my laptop down here. Okay. Vada Konasana, because we love it. And it's good for everything. Vada Konasana A, heels as close to your pelvis as you can. Your shins will be in a straight line. Inhale, fold forward, exhale. And in this one, we're reaching our chest far forward. So it's not actually the roundy back position. That would be B, which is infinitely harder than A. Okay, let's rise up. And just maybe cradle the right leg, but let's keep our left foot kind of close to us, just somewhere in the vicinity. Okay, so this looks pretty easy. Let's bring our hands, I'm just gonna face you, but you're fine there. Let's bring our hands to our ankle foot region and just very gently start to lift your foot up. 
And as you do that, resist the urge to slump. Because you were just a moment ago sitting up nice and tall. So keep that, just start to lift your, your foot up a little higher and just see how it goes. Then maybe bring your foot in a little closer and kick yourself in the head with your heel. Okay, sundial. So left hand will come to the pinky toe side of the foot. And just like you did in the, the airplane wing thing, wedge your shoulder under your knee. And again, I use the thumb to get that calf muscle in. And that shoulder is nicely stuck. I will kick out any amount. And Carol, try um, to get your head maybe in front of your arm. So you could like, at first, you could kind of sneak it through. And then when you go to straighten your leg, if your head is in front of your arm, your arm will kind of be behind your head straighter. You'll get like, I don't know, two more inches of straight. Okay, slowly get out of there. And let's just bring the soles of the feet together again, close to the pelvis. Inhale, arch. And exhale, round. Just like cat cow, but in this flat panacea. Two more times, inhale. And exhale. One more time. Oh, baby cradle the left leg. There are a million things that you could do with your right leg at this moment. I just told you to keep it close, but you can ignore me or not. And we want to keep the shoulders back, the chest lifting. And just keep that in mind as you start adjusting your hands toward the foot ankle region and as you start lifting the foot up higher. Just notice how the tendency is to start slumping. Just try to avoid it a little bit. And that might mean that your foot doesn't go as high or maybe you don't bring your heel to your forehead. Okay, make your way into sundial. I like to get the head situated before I kick because otherwise when I kick, I get stuck on the head. So that's just, I don't know, maybe the tighter shoulder variation. Also this left arm, the bottom arm, some people have it straight out to the side. I, for a long time, learned it, fingers face in front. And so long as you feel like your shoulder is pushing your leg back, you're in a good spot. Okay, slowly get out of there. Vadapanasana. B, the hard one. So now we're going to try to bring our head to our feet. The challenge is that our feet are very close to us. So you have to really curl in cinnamon bun style. Take an inhale. And when you're ready to exhale, chin toward the chest. Belly in, sometimes I poke my elbows into the belly to help exaggerate that Uddiyana Bandha. And you just try to bring your head toward your toe. Okay, let's rise up. And vinyasa, however you'd like, we will meet in downward dog. So let's return to hands and knees. We're going to go back to Badahasta A, which we did earlier. And we're just going to play with it, finding vertical, however you want, and then coming down very slowly with bent knees. So if that means that you have to kick your legs up to get there, by all means do it. However you want to get up, it's fair game. Once you're up, take a breath or two. And really, we're just working the descent. And for this route, there's a lot of ways down. For this one, we're just going to bring our knees toward our chest 
and try to curl in. So we basically land in child's pose, but we go real slow. And the back is going to have to round quite a bit. Keep fighting, Carol. Slow, slow. Okay. That was good. So one piece that I see, we need a little more hamstring involved. So this is kind of what happened. I'm going to exaggerate it a bit. But you were up, everything was good. And then as you came down, everything was good. And you started to curl, and then the feet unraveled from your butt. So instead, as you come down, keep your feet up for as long as possible. Try it again. And in that sticky moment when you want to collapse because of gravity, just pause, take a breath, try not to move at all. And then you'll gain control again. Very good. Okay. So whenever you feel like you've rested enough, meet me in downward dog. Let's bring the right foot forward to the hands. We'll lower the back heel. So now it's heel to arch alignment. And we'll try that airplane wing thing again. We did it earlier with heel to heel alignment. You might find that this is easier or harder. You might find that now you start to think, maybe I should put my foot behind my ankle because the logistics are such that you could. If you'd like to put your foot behind your ankle, walk your right foot, your front foot, more to the left maybe three inches or so. And then you'll have an easier time getting your head to follow where your shoulder lands. And if you're doing head behind the ankle, you can put your left hand on your right ankle and your left elbow on the floor. It just helps make it more solid so you don't feel sleepy. Slowly come out of wherever you were. Carol took this opportunity to go to the bathroom. Oh, there she is. And Vinyasa. A lot of people think this is the best foot behind the head prep. I have mixed feelings about it, but it is valuable. So left foot forward, right heel down. One of the things I love about it is You'll know if today is one of those days. Is today a day that it's going to work? This pose makes it real easy to choose easier or harder poses. Sometimes I straighten that front leg and then kind of dive in as it bends. And you make some choices. Is your head going to there today? Okay, slowly unravel and vinyasa. When you do a full series of a shanga, everything is in sequence, and you can kind of gauge if pose number 12 was iffy, then you know pose number 15 is going to suck. But if pose number 12 worked out okay, then maybe that's a good sign for pose number 15. Okay, let's jump through and have a seat. Every day is so different. Part of the Ashtanga thing is the practice stays the same. So because every day is different, it means that you're different, not it. So let's lay back. Right leg to baby, not baby cradle. Um, what is it? Happy baby. 
So make a choice about your left leg. For today, I'm going to keep my knee close to my chest so that I have an easier time getting that right leg behind the head. You could also, instead of going foot behind the head, you could do that baby cradle that we did. Or you can do that other prep, which is more pigeony. Right arm makes a pillow. So if you go to any of those things, or you can do that kick your heel to your forehead thing that we did sitting up. If you're going to put your foot behind your head, there's a very real calf muscle potentially limiting you. So roll it toward your ear as you're putting your shoulder in front. If wherever you went turns out to be easy, maybe straighten your left leg along the mat. Slowly let that go. We're just going to rock up to sitting. You can rock a few times or you can go in one fell swoop. Okay, so we're either, a couple options here, either Janya Shasasana, foot to thigh, or number four pose, ankle to thigh, or foot behind the head. So just do one of those things as our setup. Left leg is straight. And inhale, sit up a little taller and fold forward for your exhale. Try to reach your left foot. Okay, we'll rise up. We'll vinyasa out of there. If you have your foot behind your head, you're going to place your hands, lift your butt. And then slide your left foot through the little space so that you can be outside. Okay, all of that on side two. So we'll jump through, sit down, and lay down. And then we'll just start with happy baby. Same concept here as what we did earlier in Marjasana A. You're trying to get your thigh and ribs to have this different relationship. Only in yoga is it going to be your thigh behind your ribs. Okay, so make a choice about your right leg for now. Make a choice about how you're going to do your left leg and your shin. Really, we're trying to get our shin across the chest eventually. And when it's easy-ish going across the chest, it will just go across behind your shoulders. And I try to get my foot, left foot, toward the right shoulder when my foot is behind my head. Some people can get their foot like all the way to the armpit. So just know that whatever I show you or tell you is not the end. There is always more. Even for someone like Atsura, there is still more. It becomes Cirque du Soleil at some point, however. Okay, so we'll slowly get out of there. Bring the knees in. And as you're going to rock forward and back, try bringing your chin toward your chest so that you're a little more round. And there's no jagged edges as you're rocking. And we'll sit up, we'll straighten our right leg, and we'll make a choice about that left foot. Either John Yu A, foot to thigh, number four, ankle to thigh, or foot behind the head. Once you're ready, fold forward. I need an extra moment to negotiate my cap, my hair, etc. Those of you with your foot behind your head, as you're folding, point your left toes and engage your hamstrings. So squeeze your left heel toward your right shoulder. And we'll rise up. We'll vinyasa from there.
So Lisa, I notice you don't like keeping your foot behind your head when you lift your foot. Interesting. We'll have to text about that a little bit. <laughs> okay, so let's go to hands and knees again. And just like we did before we, uh, we came down really slow, we're gonna try to do that again, but from bottom has to see. So get there however you need to, and try to come down toward child's pose very slowly. Badhas to see is the one where our head is on the floor, so it is a headstand, but our forearms are parallel and our palms are flat. And you can always repeat the headstand we did before, because it is plenty hard. Miss Blue, let me see it one more time. I like that you're getting up without a wall. That's good. And it'll almost feel like sore in your obliques as you're lowering. Okay, so that was way too fast. <laughs> That was like 200% too fast. All right. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> moving on anyway. So let's meet in downward dog just so that we can settle our breath again. Let's jump through and have a seat. We'll half lotus our right leg. And then we'll fold our left leg back. Or not one up. If half lotus is not your shtick, just put your foot by your thigh. We're going to twist to the right. Left hand under the right knee. In second series, this is one of the poses that transitions you from deep back bends into forward bends. Oh, hello. My sweet girl who almost never comes on camera is here. Okay, so unround yourself and let's turn it into full lotus or just cross your legs somehow. And we're just gonna practice putihi because that gives us the feeling of lifting up that we need for Karanavasana. So hands down, lean forward so your shoulders are literally forward of your hips and push to straighten your arms. And your back is rounded and you're trying to lean forward enough to keep your butt in the air. And you're trying to lift your knees up toward your shoulders. Okay, come on down. Unravel yourself and we'll try the other side. You can fold the right leg back first and then do half lotus or the other way. And we twist to the left. Let's unravel, cross the legs. If you're going for full lotus, it's going to feel a little weird because it's your left leg on top. It's fine. We'll lift the tail, tail. So lean forward, push down. The more you push down, the higher your butt is going to get, and then it's easier to get everything else up. Good. And come on down, unravel. Okay, let's just make a wide. V for Upavisha Konasana because it feels good. Almost like a few moments of rest. Engage the quads. 
Sometimes it's confusing to know how to do that. So in this pose, I think of flexing the feet a little more and pressing the calf muscles down. And as soon as I do that stuff, the quads are on point. Okay, let's rise up. We're gonna meet in a split right leg in front. Depending on your space, you might wanna keep your right leg out to the side. My floor is kind of hard, so I'm gonna put the right leg in front. And you could be with your front leg straight or bent, your back knee up or down. Lots of weight in the hands until one day the pelvis is down. Okay, other side. So you can pivot around or you can go through downward dog, change sides. This is just going to help us get up into Pinchamayarasana. Because the tighter you are in the legs, the more you have to kick. The more you have to kick, the more precarious you're going to feel in the balance. So we just want to, over the years, get a little bit more flexible so that we can lift up easier. Okay. So somehow come to the top of your mat for downward dog. All right, we come to the knees for our first Pinchamayarasana. We'll do this a few times, so don't worry too much about it. Just lower to your elbows, measure out with your fingers so you know your elbows are not too wide. If your elbows are too wide, it's gonna be a lot harder. So make sure that you're set up nicely and then just come up. I'm gonna try doing a scissor thing because I find that fun and amusing. So maybe join me in that. Okay, let's meet in a squat. Take your time coming down. So we're gonna just go for one more brief little baby bakasana, and then we're gonna sit on our butts again. So as you're coming forward, you can either have your knees right in your armpits or like outside your shoulder a little bit. Either way will work, but your knees have to squeeze in toward each other. If they don't squeeze in, you're going to slide off. So once you get into your position, it's going to be a lot of inner thighs. Remember that Suzanne Summers thing from the 80s? She would be proud of us here. Okay. So Carol slid, but okay. Life goes on. So let's meet on our butts. Lotus up your legs. And if you cannot lotus your legs, I Think for right now, just cross your legs. And then in a moment, we're going to kind of take two paths. So once you're either crossed or loaded, you're going to hug your knees in. And just try, it may or may not work today, try to interlace your fingers around. So that would mean that your knees are very close to you. And this is another one of those things where if I were to do this in my preps, I can sort of gauge whether the pose itself is going to be successful that day. Okay, so we're going to try to put our elbows now in front of our shins. So my right hand is going to hold my left shin, and I'm going to pull that left shin in as I try to get that left arm in front. And then I'm going to use my left hand to hold the right leg. I'm going to push that right knee back and try to get the right arm in front. So now I can do hands in prayer. It's not all that different than what you did in releasing the fingers, but it's different enough that now it feels like kind of nerve wracking. Okay, so I've kind of screwed myself because I'm facing the front and I have no mat. So I have to undo this. So those of you who are in Lotus stay. If you're not in Lotus, undo where you are 
and return to baby Bakasana. Those of you in Lotus, here's where we're going. We're gonna lower our hands. There's gonna be a moment where our butt is kind of flying forward. I haven't done this in a long time, so let's see if it works. Okay. So I brought my elbows down real quick and whipped my butt up. And it's a very fast movement, very similar to baby Bakasana once you're there, but getting there is tough. For a long time, the reason it didn't work for me is because I went slowly and then it's like, hell no, I need a harness if I'm gonna go slow. So the hands are in front and then the elbows have to come in and down. You're close, Lisa. So you're gonna think more, um, kind of like tuck your elbows underneath you. And it's an exhale, I think, that will get us there. <laughs> kind of like you're throwing yourself to the walls. <laughs> oh God, let that go. I think my hips are exploding. Okay, downward dog. So that end place that we went is the halfway point of Karanavasana. All right, so from down dog, let's just do a nice friendly pinch of my arasana again. I'm gonna watch. Well, then the boom doesn't cheat. <laughs> On your way down, Let's bend the knees into the chest. Try to go slow like you did from your headstand. Okay. So the pinch of itself was good, Carol. Just coming down was fast, but not a big deal. Okay. So our next little order of business, we're gonna go from either Badahasta A or Badahasta C or Pincha Mayurasana, and we're gonna curl into a little ball. If you're in Pincha, you might be able to land your knees like you did baby Bakasana. I haven't tried this in a while since before my vacation. Oh God. So we'll see. We'll see if it works. So I'll try to show you. But you know where I'm trying to end up with the knees on the arms. Oh, and my feet touched down. So there was a bit of a cheat there. So it's all that curling in that we did before. Let's give it a whirl. It's way more fun than it looks. And it's gonna be a little more sanyuasana and less pincha. So look between your elbows, not between your fingers. Okay, Carol, that was better, but you're still letting your heels kind of run away from your butt. But the back shape was better. Okay, so next order of business, we're gonna try to lotus up our legs when we're upside down. So one of the reasons that's tough is lotus is hard. The other reason is your hands are not, are not gonna help you. So, Either go for lotus or go for that number four thing that we've done as prep in other classes. We didn't do it today, but you'd come up. I'm just in Badahasta A right now so that I could talk and you'd be here and you'd be trying to bring your shin toward your chest. So that's really great prep for doing a lotus. So you decide if you want to do this or lotus up your legs. And I'm just going to do this on both sides before I watch you because otherwise I will walk lopsided all day. Okay, so Lisa, now that you're there, yeah, bring your knees in as close as you can. Good, and then up again. Okay. 
Okay. And Carol, as your top knee is coming in, make your bottom knee move away from you a little bit more. Yes. Good. Okay. So whenever you've done both sides or you've played with Lotus and take a rest. So that was very smooth, which just means that we could try it in a different base, different foundation. So if you were in Badahasta A, maybe go to C, maybe go to Pincha. I'm going to attempt Lotus from Pincha, because again, I haven't done it in a week. Um, but watching that won't really do anything for you. So just practice one of those things. If you're trying to load us up from pincha, it's not really pincha, it's more straight up and down. Good. So I attempted Lotus from Pincha and then I tried to lower down, but it was like a brick sinking really fast into the ocean. I will try it again. Um, it is fun. Your butt is padded, so when you fall out of it, it's not that big of a deal. And at least, Lisa, you could try this because your lotus is not a big deal. You whip into it pretty quick. Um, otherwise, Carol, you could try from Pincha landing here just without lotus. So landing in baby Bakasana. So this pose, this is Karanavasana, but it's really only the first half of Karanavasana. And there used to be a time where I could land it like 90% of the time. Now I probably land it 50% of the time. Oh, I went way too fast and my lotus was not tight enough. So I don't know if you can see this. I started my descent too soon. My lotus is sloppy as heck. So you gotta make your lotus tighter than I did. So give it a whirl if you want. I'm going to try it again. So the reason I started to lower down too soon is because I got tired in the shoulders. The struggle is real, y'all. This is why we have to practice. I am just a rock today, a rock sinking at the ocean. But it was fun. Okay, let's meet in downward dog. We'll forget it ever happened. So you can see how foot behind the head would help because it helps you get into lotus real quick. And the quicker you can get into lotus, the more energy you're going to have to, load, uh, to lower your legs down. Okay, let's rock forward the plank and lower down to the belly. Forearms down in front, sphinx pose. So the reason I said we, when we lower down, that's the halfway point, because you have to lift up again. That's crazy, I never once lifted up. I would lower down and then I would wait for Tim to come from across the room and help hoist me back. Okay, so let's lower to the chest, reach the right arm out to the right, and rock over to that side. You can keep your left hand on the floor where you can see it, or you can reach it behind your back. You try to interlace your fingers. And let's undo and head over to the other side. We try to get our left hand about shoulder height. If it was lower than that, when you go to roll on it, it would be so easy. You wouldn't feel anything really. Okay. 
we're going to have to try Karanavasana again in a few weeks, or maybe just more often. Okay, let's come back to the center. Hand under the shoulders. Please help lift your chest up off the ground, roll your shoulders back. For right now, we're going to keep our thighs on the floor. We're just going to flex the feet and the knees, reach for the ankles. And to keep the thighs on the floor, we're just going to kick our feet back. It's going to lift our chest up. It's an interesting stretch for the belly. Okay, come on down, hands under the shoulders. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Let's come forward and stand on the shins. Crawl the toes under. We're going to do Ustrasana twice. For this one, let's have the heels high. Roll the shoulders back. Either keep the hands on your hips or reach back for the heels. One. Two. Three. Four. And we'll rise up. Let's just place the hands. Actually, let's place the forearms now and step back either down dog B or if that feels like too much, interlace your fingers and make it dolphin pose. Head off the ground. Okay, walk the feet back, turn it into forearm plank. Belly is in and helping us lift our hips up. Carol, walk your feet back a little more. Good. Okay, lower to the knees, then the hips, and then the whole torso. Okay, Dandarasana, normal. So we're going to hold the ankles which from the outside and this time our thighs might come off the ground. We'll kick, so we're kicking back and up. Some folks the thighs come really high and they look like a teardrop. If I ever see a recording of me doing this pose it looks like my thighs are barely off the ground. But visualize that they are. Okay, come on down. Hands under the shoulders. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Let's jump onto the shins. Sit between the feet. And potentially lay back, Sutta Virasana. If this hurts you in any way, repeat some of the back bend we've already done. Ways to make this less painful is get your feet real close to your hips. Literally, the arches are like touching your hips. Press your toenails into the floor. Keep your thighs relatively close together. If the knees splay out to the side, sometimes it hurts the knees a bit. Okay, and let's start to rise up. And once you're sitting up, just come to stand on your knees for Ustrasana round two. If you held your heels before and your toes were tucked and you felt like that was enough, do that again. Otherwise, untuck the toes, hips forward, chest up, inhale. Either stay or reach for your heels. We'll rise up. We'll take it through a vinyasa. Okay. 
So come and have a seat and lay back. We're just going to do two back bends from our backs, and then potentially one from Pincha, and then we're, we're basically done. So once we're on our backs, we'll get our feet close to our butts. We'll lift the hips up. Either stay on your shoulders, practice still opening the throat, or place your palms flat and lift up or the your up. Come on down, take one breath, resting somewhere. I'm just resting on the crown of the head because it's a little easier. And then rise up, inhale. We'll stay for five. One more breath. And slowly come on down. Okay. So you could always do that again, or just rock up and come into your down dog B on the forearms so that you can find your picture by your asana. The back bendy version. So when we were doing all of that lower and into Karandavasana, you had to look sort of between your elbows, but now you're gonna to try to look as far forward as possible. Maybe to your fingertips, Glue your legs together. It will help occupy your mind. Yes, Carol, that was good. <laughs> it's kind of exhausting, huh? <laughs> but it's done. <laughs> she's an addict though, so she's going again. So Carol, keep reaching with your feet, pushing with your hips. Try to see the baseboard with your eyeballs. Yes. Okay. Good. So whenever you're done with such shenanigans, we're just going to sit up. We'll bend the knees and open the knees out to the side. So it's just a diamond shape. Hold on to the shins somewhere and just go through a few little cat cows here. The next time that you're rounding the back, pretend someone punched you in the gut so that your mid back stretches and start to come forward with your head and torso so that your head eventually lands near the arches of your feet. And just notice how much harder it is to do this after your back bend. When you did this earlier, essentially you came much lower, much quicker. But it's really good practice to do this now because you start to figure out how to work that knee on a bunda to your advantage. The more you can draw into that mid belly, the more stretch you get in the back. Okay, so we'll rise up for Paschimottanasana, straighten out the legs. Or if you want the knees bent, it's fine, just that your legs would now be together, feet facing up. We'll hold the edges of the feet. You can either drop your head or look forward. And let's rise up. We'll lay down. And we'll just go through one little twist to each side with potentially eagle legs. So we'll place the right thigh on top of the left, knees close to the chest, and then down to the left, close to the armpit. And gaze to the right. So it's kind of a twist and a forward bend combined. Both shoulders on the floor. Come through center, you can unravel your legs first so that it's easier on your back. 
and then left on top of right. Sleeves in and then over. Unravel before we fall asleep and let's bring it back into center for Shavasana. Let it go. more breaths here. And with the eyes closed, go through your process. 
to eventually sit up. Let's bring the hands together. Your next exhale, fold forward any amount. Namaste.